consider these two k-maps. We can make subcubes in these two k-maps like this. This is one subcube. This can be a subcube. This can be a subcube. This can be a subcube as well as this can be a subcube. In the same way, here in this k-map, this can be a subcube. This will be a subcube. This will be a subcube. This will be a subcube. And this will be a subcube. Okay. And what these subcubes are representing? Here, this subcube is representing C complement D and A. This subcube is representing A, B, C. This subcube is representing uh, A complement C, D. This subcube is representing A complement B, C complement. And the biggest one is representing B and D, B, D. Okay. In the same way, this subcube is representing C, D, A. This is representing A complement B, C. This is representing A, B, C complement. This biggest one is representing B, D. This one is representing uh, C complement D, A complement. Okay. Therefore, the solution equation can be A complement B C complement plus A D C complement plus A B C plus A complement C D plus B D. Here in the same way, the solution equation can be A B C complement plus A C D plus A complement B C plus A complement D C complement plus B D. Okay, now by looking at these two solutions, you may think that these two solutions are going to give us the minimized equation, but these two equations are not minimized. Here in this equation, this BD and here in this BD, even if you add this BD or even if you don't use this BD into the solution equation, still uh, the solution will be correct. That means you are not changing the logical value of the function. That means this is representing the same function. It is also representing the same function as well as if we add a complement BC complement plus ADC complement plus ABC plus A complement CD. This itself is representing the above function. Without BD also we can do this. Here in this in this case, if, if we write ABC complement plus ACD plus A complement BC plus A complement DC complement. So this smaller equation is representing the same thing. Okay, so you can prove it. It's not difficult. It's very easy to prove uh, this kind of equations. Okay, you can take this equation, you can minimize it. Let me do one thing. Let me take one of the equation and let me try to minimize or let me try to eliminate BD from this. Okay, so let me take this one or this one. Okay, let me take this one. This one is A, B, C complement plus A, C, D plus a complement BC plus A complement DC complement plus BD. Okay, plus BD. Now, what you can do is, in this equation, you can take A complement plus A. So, it will be ABC complement plus ACD plus A complement BC plus A complement DC complement plus A complement BD plus A bd we just did this a plus a complement okay plus a bd this is d okay now if you take some equations like uh, this is a complement bd this is a bd a complement bd plus a bd now in this equation you can also get the third variable which is c so this will be a b c complement plus a c d plus A complement B C plus A complement D C complement plus A complement B D C plus A complement B D C complement plus A B D C plus A B D C complement A B D C complement okay now take few equations like if you take this one 
and if you take this one then you can eliminate d okay you can eliminate d from this these two equations or you take this one and this one you can eliminate but uh, we will take discuss at, at, at later point of time if you take this one and if you take this one you can eliminate d in the same way if you take uh, this one and this one you can eliminate b if you take this one and this one you can eliminate d for example in the first case this one in the first case if i take a the c complement is common between this one and this one so we'll be getting 1 plus d plus if you take a d c as common a d c as common so this will be 1 plus b plus between this one and this one if you take a complement b c as common so it is 1 plus d plus between this one and this one if you take a complement d c complement so you will get 1 plus d okay so this is one this is one this is one and this one these are eliminated so we are getting a b c complement plus a d c plus a complement b c plus a d c complement hence you can see this is a minimized equation this is a minimized equation see from this k map we are getting the equation where we are having b d still we think that this equation may be minimized and we think that this equation may be minimized but i have just proven that because uh, i have just proven that even you are taking bd then bd is just redundant we can even minimize bd and we can even further minimize the further expression now for this to uh, if you want to do this then you need to understand why we are having this bd in this particular expression and how can we minimize this bd right for this we need three concepts we need to learn what is an implicant we need to learn what is an implicant second we need to learn what is a prime implicant what is a prime implicant and third thing which we need to learn is what is an essential prime implicant what is an essential prime implicant what is an essential prime implicant okay so first one is implicant so first of all let me uh, define what is an implicant in an informal term then we will discuss about the formal term of what is an implicant okay so what is this in implicant implicant is every sub q creates an implicant or every sub q forms an implicant for example we have this sub q it is an implicant we have this sub q it is an implicant we have this sub q it is an implicant this is an implicant even if you make a smaller sub q like if you make a smaller subcube like this one this is an implicant this is an implicant even this is an implicant even this is implicant so every subcube is an implicant what we can do is we can say every subcube is an implicant every subcube is an implicant right for example this is implicant this is an implicant this is an implicant this is an implicant even the smaller this one Uh, sub cube of size two is an implicant. 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 As well as this bigger sub cube, which is of size four, it is an implicant. Okay. Next is, next is, we need to learn what is a prime implicant. We need to learn what is a prime implicant. What is a prime implicant? An implicant, an implicant, which is not a part, which is not a part yeah that means completely complete part of any other sub q any other sub q is called an is called an prime implicant is called an prime implicant is called an prime implicant so any sub cube which is not a part of any other sub cube is called as prime implicant for example for example here you can see this complete sub cube is not completely immersed or it is not completely inside any other sub cube therefore it is a prime implicant this is a prime implicant 
this is a prime implicant this is a prime implicant as well as this biggest sub cube is also a prime implicant but you can see if you take the smaller sub cube inside this bigger sub cube for example here we are making four sub cubes this one this one this one and this one these four sub cubes are not prime implicants because they are completely inside a bigger sub cube or you can say completely inside a, a bigger sub cube you can uh, make it like this if you take a box like if you take a box like this if you take a box like this you can consider this box an implicant if you have one more box inside this box like if you have one more box inside this box then you can also consider this box as an implicant but this bigger box the box which is outside it is a prime implicant it is a prime implicant but this smaller box is not a prime implicant right so here you can see this one this biggest sub cube is a prime implicant but the smaller sub cubes which are inside this bigger sub cube is not a prime implicant they are just implicants okay and third one is the essential prime implicant so the kind the sub cubes the sub cubes which are covering at least one one at least one uh, term or you can say at least one one which is not covered by any other sub cube they, they are called as essential prime implicants they are called as essential prime implicants right for example for example this is an implicant 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 as well as the smaller ones they are implicants this is a prime implicant 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 as well as this is also a prime implicant but if you take essential prime then this one is an essential prime implicant why because this is covering at least one one which is not covered by others it is also an essential prime implicant this one is also essential prime implicant this one is also essential prime implicant but this biggest one is not essential prime implicant because every one all the ones which is covered by this biggest sub cube is also covered by other sub cubes there is not a single term which is uh, not covered by anything else but by this okay you you should have at least one one which is covered only by this one which is covered only by this one that is why this one is not a essential prime implicant so this one is just a prime implicant but it is not an essential prime implicant it is not an essential prime implicant for a solution or uh, every essential prime implicant should be there in the solution every essential prime implicant should be there in the solution but the prime implicants may be there may not be there that depends on the requirement or that depends on the function which we will discuss how they can be there or uh, how uh, uh, it creates a difference okay so first of all let us do one thing let us study in a formal definition what is an implicate then we'll study what is a prime implicate and what is an essential prime implicate in a formal way okay